How blessed it is to be alive and well. Sunday, April 15, circa 2012. The sun is shining and it's pouring, yes. Pouring of the good vibes. The blessings of the Most High. Trust you had a good week and of course the weekend is likewise blessed. Glad you could join us this afternoon inside the Community Connection once again. Families, how are you doing? Much ado about things in and around the community, locally, national, and internationally, of course. Let me say a pleasant good afternoon, Miss Karen Batchelor, inside the studio this afternoon. Gonna have a nice little talk with Karen. Yeah, man, I've known Karen for a long time, always. A bright smile and a positive countenance, yes. Beautiful lady as well, you know. Uh, let's see here I talk. Man. Got some things to talk about this afternoon. Listen, ladies, you got to take care of yourself. You know what I admire about the ladies, Darren D? What I admire about the ladies, and last night I was at the, New the Caribbean New Jersey Reggae Awards and saw some very, very beautiful ladies. But what I admire, Darren D, are the, I tell you, man, the exotic, the bountiful and beautiful hairdos that the ladies are wearing. I tell you. Nothing like a nice... Head of hair, huh? Which <laughs> <laughs> hair and real hair? <laughs> All kinds of hair, Darren D. Listen, man, if it's on top of the head, it's a hair. Okay. Yes, sir. And I admire it when it looks beautiful and it looks good. Don't you? Uh, definitely. That's right. They got you, Darren D. <laughs> no rollers. We don't want to see any rollers outside the house. Hey, listen, once in a while you can take a few rollers, but not, nah. many, not much. <laughs> don't come out the house with rollers in your hair. Not nice. <laughs> What the ladies do take a lot of time and put a lot of time and effort into the hairdos, man. Mm -hmm. And it looks beautiful when you see it. I see a lot of ladies, though, tapping the hair, you know. Some some of the dudes, you got to tap it. itching. <laughs> itching. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can't wash it. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what that's all about. never experienced it, but I see it. Yeah, it's yeah. itching. It's itching, okay. Can't wash it. <laughs> well, the question they is, don't want to mess up the do. The, the question is, though, is why? Most these hairdos cost like $200, $300, yeah, $2,500 so, weave. Some of them. It's they, fabulous, though. It's fabulous. It looks great. It, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> Sometimes it itches. You look good, but you're itching. <laughs> <laughs> that would be your bad. It can be washed. It can be washed. It doesn't matter <laughs> if, uh, whether you know how to do it, right? <laughs> right. Get that little pen, start scratching. <laughs> oh boy, I saw some guys doing that too, man. I was uh, I was a little surprised by that. <laughs> That's something different right there. It's called shampoo and shower. Okay, there be. Okay. If I let them loose on, if I let you loose on them this afternoon, we won't have a don't program, go, man. Don't go, don't go back over my point. <laughs> They're the great vibes, Daddy. I tell you, man. But you know, the hair business is an awesome business, a big business, in fact, multi-billion dollar business. A lot of our people are prolific in the business. You know, we're not very engaged in the entrepreneurial aspect of it. Like I was saying, the hairdos are prolific in the community, and they are beautiful. Sometimes they itch. <laughs> oh, that's all right. If you can handle it, then wear it, huh? <laughs> that's right. But I wonder why it itches sometimes. I'm going to talk to Karen. She is a hair stylist. How, how would I refer to you officially, Karen? Come on up to the mic and let's talk a little bit just the mic, sister. So you're my hair. You have one of your own. <laughs> How would you describe yourself? Hair stylist. Hair stylist. Hair designer. Hair designer. Cosmetologist. Cosmetologist. Depends on what. Yeah, man. That's how you go. <laughs> she is prolific in the area of hair design, treatment, and care. But you know, we were talking the other day, and it came to me that um, a lot of concerns about the hair care business. We're going to talk about it a little low and out of sorts, huh? So Karen Bachelor is here in the studio this afternoon. Karen, I know that you've studied the business. You've been in the business for a long time. Tell folks a little bit about you, where you practice your business. And, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit about some of your concerns. Okay. And some of the things I've observed, and you can put me straight on that. Okay. Go uh, start right into the mic. Then let me hear your beautiful voice. Again, my name is Karen um, Bachelor, coming to you from what ninety point one Roadblock live. Radio, Roadblock Roadblock Radio. Radio. Yeah, I'm coming out of Eminence Hair Design, located at two seven nine West Palisade Avenue in Ingalls, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and the number is two zero one two two seven zero zero one zero. A consummate businesswoman, giving a number for That's us. right. That's right. Uh, what's that? Palisade Avenue. My old stomping ground over there. West Palisade Avenue. West Palisade Avenue. Mm -hmm. And 
Now let me tell you. You know, I'm admiring the hairdos, as I said last night. You know, mm -hmm. some of them were very nice, nicely designed. Mm -hmm. And but I, and I know they're very expensive. Very expensive. Not only depending they, on where you go. Yeah, depending on where you go. Not only the new implants or the um, new strands that are, you know, mm -hmm. we woven into into artistic Nothing design. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing I, wrong no, with I'm, that. You know, but I'm minding <laughs> up. I like artistry. <laughs> You know, as long as it's comfortable and it don't eat too much. Right. <laughs> I don't have no experience in that, so I don't know. <laughs> but that they seem to quite be quite um have some conviction about that. Because <laughs> <laughs> he can't touch the scalp, that's his concern. <laughs> that's right. Touch the scalp. Wrong that's right. Your you want to feel natural. You're right. There you go, man. Nothing wrong with that. It's under there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, we're gonna get a little serious about it because there's a serious side to the business as well. The health and education component to this that we're going to explore a little bit because a lot of our women also suffer from some of the, um, I guess, the fallout of using hair products that are not as good for their health, for the hair, not as good for the scalp, and generally not as good because of the constituent components of the hair products. And uh, there are a lot of women who, you know, have adverse effects. Uh, from the using certain hair products, and uh, possibly because <clears throat> they're they're not aware of the, uh, the ingredients which make up the products, and, and and in fact, using so many of the different products at the same time to create uh, the I guess uh, you know wh whatever that final uh, emulsion that the hair is uh, is emulsified in, you know, to get it to twist or turn or whatever the case may be, or to lay the weave right, or to lay the weave right, <laughs> or something like that. You know, oftentimes, uh, the cross-reactions of those products can cause women to experience adverse reaction, adverse uh, reaction to their scalp and the hair indeed. Some people uh, lose some of their hair, you know, some of the hair fall out over time, you know. So Karen, as a stylist, cosmetologist, a trained professional in it, in the, what are some of your experiences, you know, with... Uh, the, the adverse effects of some of the products that are on the market. And uh, I know there are a lot of the designers of the products. There, uh, I mean, there's so many of them out there, yeah, you know, I mean, that um, you now women sit down in the chairs and they, they get a treatment or, uh, you know, whatever, uh, a wash, whatever the case may be. They have to be concerned about some things. Mm -hmm. We need to educate them a little bit because, um, you know, there, there are a lot of impact, a lot of effects out there. So I'm not an expert on that. So... Talk a little bit about, you know, some of the products that are on the market and some of the concerns you have as a cosmetologist on, on, on the way women treat the, the hair, especially African African women, you know, whether you're from the Caribbean or United States. or the African hair is different than uh, the, the um, uh, Caucasian hair or, or um, in Asian uh, hair. Let as me far be as texture, right. yeah politically correct. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, there's a lot of hair coming out of India that are being sold on the market as well, used by our fabulous. African women. Nothing and, wrong and with that either. Them are fabulous, <laughs> right? Well, there you go. You know, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit. Huh? I mean, talk about some of the hair things that you do. I mean, when a, when a woman comes into the shop and she wants to take care of, uh, you know, let's get her do and look mm. beautiful for the weekend or the week. That's right. You know, you go to work, right? Right. Yeah. You have to take in consideration their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, for a corporate person, mm -hmm. a teacher, a lawyer, a party girl, everybody has different personalities. So, mm -hmm. you have to take in consideration their personalities mm -hmm. to create that final end product as far as hairstyle. Okay. All right. And uh, I guess that, will, that will, there, there are certain tiers and levels of uh, hair care products out there, huh? that supposedly do one thing or another. Yeah, everybody thinks like, you know, shampoos are shampoos, conditioners are conditioners, but mm -hmm. it's not. Like, the, the compounds and the ingredients that make these things up um, reacts on the hair differently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to take in, like, the, the, the scientific part of it, like the alkalinity of the products and the acidity of the products, it makes a difference mm -hmm. with the end result of the, the hair. Okay. Now, as cosmetologists, when you go uh, to school and get trained, you're, you're taught about these, um, these different uh, products and how they may react to the, in a, in a, to the hair. Or, I, I mean, do they, do they teach you about different types of hair and how, how, you know, what products may be good for one type of hair versus another? 
Well, they do to a sense. When I went, it was like a more on the surface. You're just there to, you know, the, the hair cutting and all that stuff just to get your license. But it's up to you after the fact to keep your, um, to keep educated on um, the different products that are coming out every day, really, mm -hmm. and um, what it does to the hair. Um, now that the hair um, business is much bigger than it was before, you know, um, in schools, they may take a little bit more caution on like teaching, you know, more about the scientific part of the hair. I don't know because I'm not there now, mm -hmm. but I'm assuming being that it's it's so big. But when I was going, it wasn't as like in detail. You're mm -hmm. going from textbook. Mm -hmm. And once the textbook is done, you know, you just do the hair, but you have to keep on, you know, enhancing your skills and your technique and your education mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with, you know, uh, personal classes trade shows and things like that. So it, it is important that uh, stylists and cosmetologists go keep a continuing education process going. It's, it's very important because it's not just hair. It's a part of your body. Your mm -hmm. body is living. Your hair is living. And if you're doing the wrong thing with your hair, just like you can break down, your hair can break down as well. And, and what, what can happen to the hair and the scalp and, and the, the, oh the my follicles? God. There's so many those. different things. Mm -hmm. You can kill the nerve of the follicles with the, the weaves, having long weaves too long and you know mm -hmm. it's not getting the, the, the proper um, care underneath mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. that's a big factor mm -hmm. you know and then of course there are uh, there's a whole chemical chemistry behind here okay, there's a whole chemistry that, behind that, that, it. that should be of concern now as, a, as an afro jamaico caribbean right. american you know i mean you're you're you're, you're seeing men, many of your clientele most of your clientele are probably of the same uh, uh, persuasion, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of Jamaican ladies and Caribbean ladies, uh, you know, African American ladies flock the hair stylists on a, on a regular basis mm -hmm. during the mm -hmm. weekend, uh, primarily mm -hmm. on the weekend. Mm -hmm. but, you know, the parties come up and the yes. banquets come up yes. and the shows come up yes. and yes. why well, don't look good? But you know, <laughs> I mean, there there is there there is something that we have to we have to take care of ourselves. That's right, right? Mm -hmm. Because not because it looks good or it feels good means that it's good for you. That's right. You know, and so what what are some of the some of the, the uh, impacts that you see on our women's hair, uh, or you know, if that that who are not careful in what they're using. Um, okay, to understand it first, can mm -hmm. I just talk a little bit sure. about the strand? Yeah. So, um, for me to explain what's been happening, um, to understand the the hair, the strand of the hair is. Um, composed of three layers you have the cuticle layer which protects that inner layer the right. cuticle layer is known as the horny layer mm -hmm. you have to actually go through that to get to that middle layer mm -hmm. um, to change anything within the hair so every time you're doing a chemical process on the hair it changes that middle